into sim racing. You're four wheel racing on the sim, aren't you? There's no injuries, at least yeah. not that I'm aware of yet, on iRacing. Honestly, it's something that I, I kind of um, was an interest of mine for a while, but I just was really hesitant um, to, to, to go through with it. Lucas Oil Studios, Freak Nation, almost 22 years of doing this. And a lot of those 22 years, I don't care if it was uh, Jeremy McGrath's interview in 20, in 2000, or if it was James Stewart's first interview at 15 years old with us, or Ricky Carmichael running the 250s back then. Uh, we've been a proponent for outdoor and, of course, Supercross. Joy Savacci joining us here in the Freak Nation, who unfortunately had a, a hell of a, a knee replacement, a new ACL back on the bike. And it, it, if there weren't guys like you, Savachi, I don't know if motocross could survive where you get injured, somebody fills in for you, then someone else gets injured and you fill in for them. What a strange set of circumstances for you, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, it's never ideal to get hurt. Um, but, you know, I think in our sport, it's, um, it's unavoidable. So uh, with that being said, it, an unseries um of events that unfolded took place and at one point i was bummed missed the supercross season and wasn't sure what was going to go on and then the next thing you know we're we're going racing um back with the team that that i originally made my debut with uh, in the 450 class so uh yeah things work out in a in a very strange way sometimes but um you know for me this time around it uh it worked out uh best case scenario Look, man, grabbing a top 10 for your first race back at Hangtown, some people may look at that. What? Not a top five, but, bro, for you working back from a torn ACL, getting on the bike for the first time in real competition, how do you chalk that top 10 finish? Um, I don't know. I'm a racer, so obviously I always want to do um, – I always want more. But, I mean, all things considered, I hadn't taken a gate drop since the third weekend in January – um and like you said i i had the, an acl tear that i had fixed so um basically it was four months off the motorcycle and then we had 13 days of actual riding time going into the first round so you know there was a lot of unknowns um you know the goal was top 10 um i do feel like um i did leave a, a decent amount on the table so uh, we went to work this week the team and i and um i feel like we've made some pretty good changes so i look forward to obviously i always look forward to coming to colorado i've had uh, good success here in the past and um i look forward to coming here this weekend i do believe that uh we'll be a little bit more competitive and uh, have a little bit more fight in me so you know again i'm a racer so i always want more but with that being said um you know we got ninth overall and hadn't had a gate drop in over four months so all things considered it was uh, it was a good building block it was enormous. I mean, it's still incredible to me what you guys as dirt bike riders go through on a daily basis. I was going to say a week in, week out basis, but on a daily basis, the, the brutality on your bodies is just crazy. So when you say that in your first moto back that you left a little bit on the table, were you riding purposely, conservatively? And when do you think that might end? Um, I wouldn't say purposely conservative but you know um it just became habit because the last really the last two weeks that i rode before i had my knee fixed i was riding with the torn acl so you know anytime i put my foot down it was it was very painful um so there is a little bit of ptsd there that i'm still cautious about um there, there was also some other issues that i was dealing with um not related to my knee over the weekend um, that, you know, I knew was going to be an issue. It was just a matter of when we were going to discover the bug and, and get it worked out. Um, so, you know, without going into a crazy long story, we, we've got, I believe we have the worst of it all out of the way. And, and from here uh, forward to just continue to get better and to improve. Okay. Well then clear this up for me, please. What is this taco deal you have going on with Jason Anderson? <laughs> Unfortunately for me, I think it's a taco deal that will never get solved. Uh, yeah, you know, I've known Jason for a long time and believe it or not, he's, uh, he's pretty stingy when it comes to, uh, spending money. So he does owe me tacos and, um, I would like to claim some 
Um, his win last weekend was big for him. Uh, I'm sorry, my phone's freaking out. My, that win last weekend for him was big, um, and I would like to claim a, like a small, tiny, tiny percent of, of help in that uh, because the last two weeks um, and my first two weeks on the bike, we rode together pretty much every day, um, and obviously him coming off Supercross, winning the last four in a row. You know, he he had the confidence, and he's fast, and he. Um, again, I've known Jason for a long time, so we're really close and, and he's been more than open to helping me, um, going to the practice tracks during the week, you know, we do our motos together and, uh, whether he goes first and I try to stay with him as long as possible or I'm the rabbit and I go first and, you know, it's it, just to try to run and hide for as long as possible and give him some to chase. So, um, uh, besides the tacos, I'd like, a would like a little bit of credit on the win, but, uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness. It's just uh, it's just a taco bet that, that uh, we made. Uh, honestly, it's been so long now, I forgot when we made the bet and what it was about. But I do know that there's a continuous rollover on the IOU. So at this point, he pretty much owes me a complete uh, taco franchise at this point. So hey. I'll, I'll, I'll have to work it into the next deal. Yes. Yes, he owes you a franchise. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Joey Savacci, Supercross rider. Uh, Joey, is it? The Supercross guys are getting faster and faster. The injuries are getting greater and greater. Is there a, a limit to how fast you guys can go and uh, they keep from getting injured? Or is your mindset just that the heck with the body, I'm going for the win? Um, that's a fine line. I think, uh, I think anything is dangerous if you do it enough. You know, driving to work is dangerous. So that question is, is a hard one to answer. Um, you know, I think every year everybody advances and bikes get better and we get better and we learn more. So um, I do, I don't think we've reached, you know, the peak of how fast we can go yet, which is kind of crazy to say and, and to think about. But um, I mean, I guess it depends who you talk to. I'm a, I tend to be a little bit more methodical and, um, you know, I have two kids at home. So by all means, I know the risk I'm taking and I'll do whatever I have to do to win. But, you know, I also know, know the fine line um, and know when the risk is worth worth the reward and when the risk isn't. And that's just um, – that's a balance that that's sometimes is, is hard to find. And, and sometimes I do, you know, I do misjudge it. But for the most part, as long as you can have a level head and, and weigh out the, you know, the benefits and what can come from it if it goes well and what can come from it if it doesn't go well. And I think if you can do that uh, – you know, you, you tend to, uh, to have a pretty good uh, train of thought. General Tire delivers. Is it possible to train injuries out of the sport? Uh, as much as I would like to say yes, I don't. I don't think that's possible. Um, you know, there's just so many variables in the sport, um, and a lot of times it's out of our hands. You know, whether it be a mechanical issue or or another rider issue. Um, you know, we, we have our fair share of whether they be serious injuries or nagging injuries. Um, you know, not, not every single one of those injuries um, is a fault of our own, to say. Um, so, no. <laughs> the, the, the easy answer is no. I don't think we'll ever, ever completely get rid of injuries. Um, I think as, as we learn and, and the years go on, um, I think we learn more from the safety side of things and how to avoid maybe the unnecessary risks that are out there. Um, but yeah, I think just with motorsports in general, unfortunately, there's, there's no way to take, uh, take risks out of it. Let me ask you something a little lighter before we move on. Uh, I think tacos are one of the major food groups. How do I get in on one of this? How do I get out on this bet? Uh, that's a good question. Um, and if you're making the bet through me, you'll probably get your tacos much faster than if you make the bet through Jason. So uh, I would keep that in mind with, with whatever proposal you have moving forward. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, so you're taking, no, I don't have, you're, taking, 
you're taking all proposals, Joey. And it's up to me to throw it out there. I mean, I'm I'm all ears. I'll, you can never say no to something until it's been presented to you. So, uh, you know, I'm all ears. All right. All right. I, I got a pretty good track record with uh, at least an IndyCar driver and team owner now who uh, we had a big bet on. He had to shave his head. Uh, we're not talking about tacos here. So uh, let's. And let me think on that a minute. Crash, you go ahead. Let me think on what the bet ought to be. Well, I was going to go with Joey on how he just mentioned there's really no way to get rid of injuries in any part of motorsports, any facet of motorsports. However, I did notice that during your downtime in Supercross, you got into sim racing. You're four-wheel racing on the sim, aren't you? There's no injuries, at least yeah. not that I'm aware of yet, on iRacing. Honestly, it's something that I, I kind of – um was an interest of mine for a while but i just was really hesitant um to, to, to go through with it you know for me i've always been the type of person that if i'm going to do something i want to do it right so you know it was really hard for me to justify hey like let's just go we'll, we'll buy a just a cheap setup and you know we'll go play i really had to sit on it and, and kind of think about it for a while and then um Actually, that's a good time for a sponsor plug. I actually got in contact with uh, Moza Racing, and um, there you go. they they were willing to to uh, hook me up with uh, with a system um, in exchange for for some social media posts. So um, after a lot of contemplation, I ended up going through with it, and uh, I love it. Honestly, it's something that um, other than dirt bikes, I I thoroughly enjoy doing, and. You know, there are, it's very limited injuries. You know, you might catch a finger in the wheel when it snaps back on you or something. But uh, I would say, yes, it is, it is a bit safer than uh, racing dirt bikes. Looks like the Green 87 is in for an unscheduled pit stop. It looks like an oil leak, Billy. For more on the situation, let's throw it to Mom in the pits. Well, the Green 87 is in trouble, but it has a long history of finishing strong. So what's your game plan? What the 87 driver knows is that StopLink has special additives that renews worn seals, reduces engine noise, and oil consumption to protect your engine. Lucas Oil. It works. Joey Sabachi joining us here in the Lucas Oil Studios. Motocross pilot, again, outdoor season in full swing. Back on a bike after torn ACL. And when you switch bikes, when you're running for somebody else, how much input do you have on the setup of that bike? And do you kind of pull away with some of the things things that you say to the, to the engineers afraid of offending them? Or do they say, bro, we're all ears. We can make any changes. Well, normally I would say that that is uh, one of the tricky spots of, of being a fill-in guy. But considering I have past history here, um, you know, I rode for this team in 2019. Um I'm pretty familiar with everybody here and we've all worked together at some point. So, you know, there is a little bit of ease on that side of it. I know everybody and they know what I like, um, but they've made it very clear from, from day one that, you know, I might be, um, you know, a quote filling guy, but I'm their guy and, um, you know, and, and I'm their responsibility for, for the summer and, and they want to take it as serious as if I was, you know, the, the normal guy. So um, that's something that they've been really good about and, and, um, very helpful as far as from, from the data side, letting you know, you know, w what's going on and why the bike is reacting the way it is and, and really just educating me. So um, normally I would say that might be a little bit of a tricky situation, but again, I know everybody here pretty well and I've been around them enough to know that uh, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's a business and, and they want to do well. And you know if that means that you have to say what you have to say, then that's what you have to do. So uh, for, for me, there's no reason to hold back. It doesn't help me any, and it doesn't help them any with um, as far as advancing motorcycle and making it better. Well, going back to your results then and coming off of an injury and really impressing overall, I know you're a racer. You want to be up front and on the podium all the time. But that level of comfort of coming back to work with people with familiarity of you and you of them, that speaks volumes. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's – I've – always said this um I, i'm not somebody who is a I, I am i would say i am talented on a motorcycle um but i'm also i also work really hard and for me i'm not normally somebody that can take a lot of time off and then come back and be good right away um i've always been somebody that repetition is my friend and seat time is my friend so um obviously taking four months off 
uh, fresh off injury, um, an injury that I was really unfamiliar with, never thankfully had any knee injuries in the, in the past. Um, there was a lot of unknowns, but coming into the team with familiar, with, with familiar faces, I would say for me, I've, I almost surprised myself with how fast we were able to adapt um, and kind of get back into the rhythm. I'm definitely far from being, um, you know, at 100% comfort level. But considering, again, you know, I, I had less than, than two weeks of riding time going into the race, um, I, I still, that's my thing that I had to keep reminding myself of. You know, I want to do better, but I also had to remind myself that I've never been a guy that's been able to come off of vacation or, or something and, and be good right away. So the fact that we were able to be as good as we were, considering the circumstances, um, I think speaks volume to how well how well the team has, has adapted to me coming on and, and how good of a job they've done at, at making me comfortable on the motorcycle. Well, Joey, this is awesome to get you here in the Freak Nation for the first time. 22 years of us doing this thing. You've been on that bike for quite a while, man. Thanks for doing this. Good sure. luck to you for the rest of the season there, buddy. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on.